it is designed to help uh, platform builders to build a platform that can basically hide all the clusters from the developers. Hello, everyone. We are back here at Open at Microsoft Show with Ryan. Hello, Ryan. Welcome. Hello. Hi, George. Nice, nice to have you here. We're going to talk about Kubefleet, a new CNCF sandbox project. And we're going to talk about how to manage multi cluster application management with Kubefleet. Ryan, tell people, present yourself, what's Kubefleet and how that can help them with application management in multi clusters. Yes, thank you very much, George. Yeah, so Kubi Fleet is a new CNCF uh, sandbox project. It is designed to help uh, platform builders to build a platform that can basically hide all the clusters from the developers. Basically, we we call it make clusters cattle instead of, instead of pets. Right. So high level of uh, Kubernetes is Kubernetes basically make uh, each VMs uh, cattle. Now you don't care about before before Kubernetes. You you still you babysit your nodes. Now you don't care, right? If the node goes down, your pod will be automatically moved to somewhere else. Um, the Kubi fleet is basically the same idea applied to clusters. When your your clusters uh, things can happen or if, if your clusters run out of capacities, we can find another place to run your applications. Or if you want to upgrade your cluster and then you want to make sure the upgrade is successful, uh, you can you can drain your cluster and then move your applications out and then move it back when your cluster is ready. So that's what uh, Kubi, Kubi Fleet in a high level is, is for. Yeah, the focus, like I see, is on the application management and not on the cluster management as AKS Fleet Manager. A lot of people got confused with the you know, difference between AKS Azure Kubernetes Service Fleet Manager, that's a product on Azure, with the Fleet Manager Open Source project. Yeah, so the Azure Fleet has not only managed the applications, but it also actually managed your AKS clusters. Uh, the Kubi Fleet is, is a pure uh, open source project. It works on any Kubernetes. It doesn't actually have any uh, cloud provider uh, specific logic there. It's a uh, vendor agnostic, so it technically can work on GKEs, EKS, on-prem, any hybrid. Um, it, it, it just, as long as it, it speaks Kubernetes API, so as whatever uh, thing speaks uh, Kubernetes API, it works. Yeah, let me show my screen. Um, I just have the new website here. We're going to leave all the links on the video description and that you can follow. It's a new project. So make sure that you, you know, have a look on the website, have a look on the documentation as well. And most important, the GitHub. There's no many issues yet. You're going to open that. If you like the project, leave it, you know, a star. And, and and follow and see how you can help and contribute to the project. At the end, Ryan is going to show kind of a roadmap, and then we can discuss a little bit what's next and how you can you can help more the project here as well. But you are more than welcome. Is that is that right, Ryan? Yes, you are more than welcome to uh, help. Um, we I think the 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 normally the. Uh, the first issue will be uh, you uh, to start. You uh, please give it a try. Uh, we have documentations. Uh, you can try the documentations and see if it works. And then if you if you hit any issues, uh, uh, please uh, add uh, create an issues. And we are more than, you are more than welcome to even fix those uh, maybe documentations. And then uh, we can go from there. If you get more and more familiar with the project, then we can start talk about uh, some uh, uh, minor features first, and then even bigger ones. We have tons of uh, tons of um, features or end-to-end uh, -end scenarios we would like to tackle. So. Uh, yeah, at the end of the talk, I'll talk about briefly talk about all these um, roadmaps and call for actions, so you can definitely see the potentials there uh, for contribution. So I have your screen here, share. Let me share your screen. Then you start talking, explaining what's really how that works with Kubeflow. So yeah, can you see my screen now? Yep. 
Cool. So yeah, so let me go back to this uh, high level idea of uh, multi-cluster management, right? So from our customers, uh, we see there are two major patterns of multi-cluster management. The first pattern we call them a multi-single tenant. What does that mean is uh, we've seen some of the customers when they have uh, multi-clusters and, and pretty much every, all, all, the, um, all our customers or uh, most of the um, teams nowadays have multiple clusters. It's hard to see we just have one cluster. So they, they always have multiple clusters, but the way they use it is a little bit different. Some of the customers we see that they basically do this um, um, cluster and main, they just create clusters and they don't actually uh, do anything on the application side. So in that case, they like this, uh, this diagram shows that they create clusters and for each, each individual teams. And that teams use that cluster exclusively. So there's no sharing between teams or applications on the cluster. So in for that case, uh, the good part of this is uh, the clusters are basically uh, resource and security boundaries. There's no um, multi, there's no sharing between teams, right? And, uh, and for that, for the platform admins, it's also great that they basically create a cluster. They only only care about clusters and uh, they don't they don't need to manage any application on top of that so that's actually less work for them however this type of model is not very efficient for resource utilizations and also not very good for um uh for sharing the uh, uh for applications that is running on, on top of that because you have very limited uh, clusters you can use technically um applications can run on any of these clusters, but because your team can only own these two, if any, say, cluster one is down, you, you have got down to only one cluster. And also the utilization is not very good. So we see that more and more of, of our customers are going to do, are doing this truly multi-tenant uh, uh, management. So that uh, basically you can see in this case, the team A and team B share a cluster. And team B and team C can share a cluster, and this is dynamic. Like so, the as the means doesn't. Uh, it's not stack. It's not like the team B can only have two or three. For example, if the cluster four is down or cluster four is is full, they can create another cluster and move uh, team B to to that cluster, cluster six, and team C can stay on cluster four so that they can use uh, full utilize the cluster, but also give the flexibilities. So clearly, there are uh, advantage of having this uh, mechanic. Uh, paradigm. However, the downside is also clear is it is less, um, definitely it's more complicated. Now the system and the means or platform and the means needs to figure out where the uh, each team's cluster goes and then manage their boundaries, um, namespace, most likely it's namespace based. So you have to set up the uh, credentials, everything for the namespace and uh, move things around. That is actually not easy for the, that's why um, not this is not the dominant patterns, and we suspect the reason is exactly because of the, the complexity involved. So here is uh, an open AI, as we mentioned, open AI cosmic. Uh, there's a, a basic Bing and uh, um, the yeah. office team use that. Uh, Shin use that. We have uh, other. I know Apple, uh, LinkedIn, all these uh, tech company use that because that's the more advanced way to use multi cluster. And, and they, I, I'm yeah. assuming that for you to be able to, you know, to get on that stage, there are some a lot of pain points, and that's where the cube feed comes to help to simplify the management of those applications running on those mode classes. Exactly. And yeah, that's let's discuss a little bit those pain points. I think you show me like a slide with the pain points. You want to discuss yeah. a little bit sure. what then the links we're going to leave on the video description. But um, how you see that, like, say, uh, um, deploy across multiple regions is also, you know, to avoid, like, uh, region failure is one thing. Normally, a lot of customers and community ask for that. Yeah. So so the, the, the short answer is um, you like to deploy your application to multiple clusters and preferably even across multiple regions. Um, but as as you can imagine, if you now have tens of thousands of uh, applications, which happens, um, the Kubi fleet uh, is used by LinkedIn, which has uh, currently has 5,000 applications. Um, so to, to if you want to do it manually, it's, it's really hard, right? So uh, that is alone is a difficult problem to solve if without any toolings. Uh, you, 
we would clearly easily lose track of which uh, application is running on where and how do you move it around. So the first thing is where to run. It's it's difficult and keep track of that. The second one is, uh, uh, as you mentioned, if if one region is down, or most cases you, you want to have this uh, DR scenarios, right? Region is down, cluster is down. That actually is relatively the, uh, for the application management side, it's, it's more or less the same. If you, uh, how do you move this uh, application to another region uh, easily? As I said, it's actually not that straightforward. If you, if the end users, you know, could be kind of applying to those clusters, how do you know that? Uh, uh, how do you easily move this to another cluster? That's actually not that straightforward. We recently had issues with our customers that they lost of they they pretty much lose the uh, the truth of what they apply to the cluster. When the cluster is down, they actually have no no way to recover that. That's exactly what uh, Kubi Fleet is here to help. Um, yeah, I see. I see those points. Like, where are you going to, you know, to deploy application? Also, keep tracking the application. If something happened to the cluster, you move your application around, and also that income traffic that you're talking about here. Um, do you wanna jump in on, you know, on maybe how is that done? Um, maybe you have a slide that you can show. How keep fit applies that? Okay, yeah, that one sounds good. Yeah, so uh, the we Kubi Fleet has maybe 10, 10 plus APIs. When I say API, in terms of um, in the in the cloud native world, basically it's CRDs. So we have about ten ish CRDs, but this one is the is kind of the center of uh, most of them. This is we call them a cluster resource placement. What it does is uh, this is the kind of like a, the brain of the Kubi fleet. Because you, you can see that, as I mentioned, Kubi fleet is two clusters like Kubernetes to a VM. So we make, uh, we basically make decisions for your applications to where to go. So here you can see that, um, I don't know if you can see my cursor, or the resource selectors is basically what, how we define a, an application. And in our, currently for this cluster resource placement, our, the boundary for an application is basically namespace. So we encourage user to, and we mostly user to already practice this way, that they group their, uh, put their uh, application into one namespace. It's really, we see people put separate uh, application into separate namespaces. It, it's not a pattern we see often. Um, so mostly we, we assume that one application in, inside one namespace, namespace. However, we do see that sometimes, and actually, Many times, user put multiple applications into one namespace. This is a different story, um, but here we, we assume it's a, a one namespace is the is the boundary of an application. So we say resource selectors. We say you are going to play, select certain namespace, and with that we we basically find everything in that namespace, not just this namespace itself, but you have your config maps, you know, row bindings, rows. Uh, secret and some other stuff, and of course your workload like deployment or, or state for set, or de even demon set. Inside namespace, we group them together as application. Then you can see that this policy, you can think of that as if you're familiar with Kubernetes, you, are, you can think of that as your pod spec, right? That's where you uh, uh, define where to find, where to, which node exactly, again, the analogy is which node you are going to send it to. So here we have uh, just an example of what type of uh, scheduling primitives we have is again. If you're familiar with Kubernetes, this should be should, should very look very familiar to you too. It's the same as the uh, Kubernetes cluster select. Uh, uh, instead of node selector terms, it's a cluster selector term. You select labels, matches, aff and affinity. We don't have any anti affinity yet. Um, and but we also have something that Kubernetes doesn't have. We have properties. You can say uh, send it to a class that have the most CPUs, least CPUs, things like that. So the idea is using this API, you can dictate or give um, Kubi Fleet uh, ideas where you want to put your uh, applications. Just one more thing is here. There's a placement type. You can see that in this example, we say pick all. Think of that as a daemon set, right? You basically you have your fleet with I don't know how many a like hundred clusters, and this is your say network policy of some role binding that you want every every fleet to have or some um, policies there. Uh, so you can say use that say pick all, so so it will go everywhere except um, whatever the affinity is. Maybe it will say certain ones you don't, don't want to 
we want to place them. We also have the place in. Basically, think of that as a deployment type. Say you only want to find the three, three clusters that satisfy your need, and we are going to run those there. This is really the high level idea of Kubi Fleet, but we have many, many different uh, um, auxiliary APIs to help you get this uh, your application running uh, really on the clusters you need. Yeah, it's great. People can go on, uh, you know, dig on the documentation as well and join the Slack channel if they have, you know, any questions and, and start engaging with the, the community and the maintainers and the contributors. And I like the, you know, the Fleet Manager Hub cluster is a separate cluster that's managing those CRDs and, and, and applying those CRDs and scheduling those applications. And what's the call for action, Ryan? What's um, what the project's looking for to develop and, and grow the project? What's coming next and how people can, what kind of features they can help? Yeah. So as I mentioned, uh, uh, kind of alluded to uh, just uh, for the previous slides that we do see some of the uh, our customers or the the uh, in the community, um, they put multiple applications into single single namespace. Um, this is kind of like historical reasons. They just bundle them together. So there are needs that you don't want to place the entire everything inside one namespace into the same clusters. You actually want to separate them out. So this is called we call them a namespace resource placements. Currently we call it a cluster. If you still remember cluster resource placement, which will put the entire namespace. This is allow user to actually separate out uh, each application inside a namespace. So that's a big uh, ticket item we are uh, trying to uh, get to. It's actually relatively similar to what the uh, current uh, APIs are. The only thing is uh, uh, we need to do some code refactoring. So this is a big ticket item. Another big Give ticket item. Give a second item, one, one more that people, and people yeah, can, well, can look at well, the other ones as well. One more thing is uh, UI. Right, so Kubernetes had a UI, and now I think we are uh, the Kubernetes single cluster is getting to this. Uh, I think is we're getting to this uh, ready around the headlamp as the single cluster UI. But headlamp is very extensible, so we are planning to add a multi-cluster UI plugin for headlamps. So now you can you, you have a have a. Um, UI that say, oh, this is my application. I pick, choose some applications, select some criteria for your uh, clusters, and then boom, this thing goes. Think of that as kind of like an Argo CD for multi-cluster. Um, yeah. So you will see all these things. I think that we are very excited about that perspective. That will give yeah, this. Yeah, that, that uh, one's very important. And we, by the way, we have a, a headlamp video here on the Open at Microsoft show. Then if you don't know what's headlamp uh, UI, uh, it's be great to see that integration. And I can see they have a lot of important new features coming that the community can help. Yeah, we, and, we just, uh, if you have questions and you know you can you can come it, and enjoy. Yeah, if if you think of uh, uh, Kubernetes for VM, uh, you can think of uh, Kub Kubi Fleet is for a uh, Kubernetes for clusters. If you think of all the features in Kubernetes, you can imagine how many features we actually need to make clusters a uh, cattle instead of a pet. They're just uh, tons, tons of uh, uh, new capabilities we need to make that a reality. Yeah, anything that's related on scheduling, you can see here quota, capacity. You can see you know, job-based scheduling as well, dynamic scheduling. So if you have any ideas, or if you want to help on those you know, roadmap features, yeah, please join you know, the project. And Ryan, thanks so much. Don't forget, you know, to leave a star on the project if you like it, and follow the Open at Microsoft show. That's part of the Microsoft Developer YouTube channel. And see you all next time. Thank you, Ryan, again. Thank you.